What is up guys? Welcome back to the 207 Outdoors channel. Today we have got the March Mystery Tackle Box. Uh, I'm gonna try to get through this as quick as I can. Uh, I have about an hour until I have to be back to class and I haven't started my reading yet. So let's jump into it. We've got our what's inside little dibble box. We've got the tips and tricks flyer. And before I even look at that stuff, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try to go in order. So first we've got the Jenko Fishing Trap Line Rip Knocker. That is a phrase if I've ever heard one. All right, so it looks like we've got, that's it. That's interesting actually. It looks like we've got a, a lipless crank here, um, but what they've done, it looks like, here, I'll take it out. Uh, it looks like they haven't attached the treble hooks. They actually come separately. We've just, yeah, we've just got the body right here. That's an interesting color. It's a weird mix between natural and and unnatural, so it actually probably would work pretty well for any uh, water clarity, whether it's clear or dirty water. What do we got going on here? Interesting, so it only comes with one treble hook as opposed to two. And it looks like there's actually only one place to put it right underneath here. I figured there'd be a spot to put one on the back side, but actually, you know what? I think there is, so maybe, I don't know, maybe the incentive is that you can choose where you want the hook. Let's see if it says anything about it on the back. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's a pretty cool bait to start off with. I really like the shape of it, and it's interesting that they uh, allow you to attach the hook yourself. And it's an interesting concept to uh, remove a hook to allow it to kind of come through vegetation a little bit easier. We got trash over there. Next, we've got the Lunker Hunt Lunker Frog. So we got this guy right here. Looks like pretty much just a, a typical uh, weedless frog, except we've got those appendages on the back. Let's check it out. So it's an iCast award-winning lure. Well, I'll have to be the judge of that. As much as I like the Guggen frog, I like having a couple backups just in case, because the last thing I want to do is lose that Guggen frog. And I actually like the way those appendages kind of flail. I bet I bet it adds a decent amount of extra weight to get that cast out a little bit farther. And it's just a little bit of extra something that flappy doodles in the water to get the fish's attention. I actually really like that. Uh, my experience with Lunker Hunt hasn't been great. Uh, the one I tried out thinking having some high hopes for, for was like the Yappa Bug, which was this super light uh, top water. with, And it was all this type of like rubber frog material. Um, but it also had it like a spoon, uh, the rubber spoon on the mouth, like right here, like a jitterbug would. But it just was so light, you never got, I threw it on my, even my lightest tackle, I threw it on and, and you never got that kind of jitterbug action that I was expecting. Um, so I was pretty disappointed with that, but this definitely looks a lot more promising. And I like the fact that it's that clear white color. Next, we've got the Savage Gear 3D Minnow, which is where, right here. Yep, Savage Gear 3D Minnow. So it looks like a super deep diving, almost like a mix between a crank and jerk bait style. Like it kind of, I don't know if, it make, if that makes any sense. It's not quite as like long and thin as a typical jerk bait, but obviously it has that kind of shape. Let's see, it dives, has it dives floating run, runs five to 10 feet. I like that depth actually. So in my pond, typically, it's actually a really shallow pond for its size. It only gets to about 20 feet at its very deepest. Uh, but there's actually this big rock pile. If you go to Fishing with Becca and Floatro's channels, they actually went out ice fishing on this rock pile here about a month, month, two months ago. Um, but during the summer, it's about 15 feet in depth. So this would actually be a really cool bait to try out there. Try ripping into the middle of that water column. Kind of as a search bait to see where those fish are in the water column. But I know with baits like this, you're really, for the most part, the baits themselves are pretty similar material, but you're paying a lot more for those nice hooks. And I'll tell you right now, these hooks actually look really nice. I actually like, I don't know if you can tell, maybe I'll get a little B-roll of it, but underneath, right, uh, yeah, you can see them right, right here. The bottom of it is actually hollow and you can see those rattles in there. And it's actually got some real hefty weight to it, which I like as well. Uh, I don't really like throwing super, super light tackle around. All right, next we have got Carl's Amazing Bait Spinner Bait. Oh boy. And if there is nothing that I like more in life, it is a spinner bait. So we've got a white and chartreuse color, probably better. I bet it would do pretty well in natural water, but I think it's probably with the chartreuse, it's probably made more for dirtier water. Um, 
which I like as well. Um, I think spinner baits work a little bit better up here in Maine in the in the spring and fall um, when typically the water is a little bit clearer. Um, but during the kind of the dog days of summer, so we tend to get a little bit of dirtier water. So if I ever decide to throw a spinner bait in the dog days of summer, when, like I said, that water's a little bit dirtier, then this will definitely be a go-to. It looks like I'll have to get a, either a hook trailer. I, I, I don't usually put trailers on my, um, on my spinner baits. So I'll have to get a trailer hook for this to make sure I get some good hookups. Northland Tackle Impulse Dipstick. It's got to be this guy right here, right? So looks like we got a pack of Senkos. <laughs> looks like we got like a water, like a green pumpkin watermelon flake color. Superior scent, 143% more effective. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Ooh, I do like that scent a lot. And I like that color too. I like the the natural color, but that mix of watermelon flake, if the water's getting a little dirty or if the sun's high in the sky, that watermelon flake in there is actually really good at reflecting the sun. Again, I mean, there's not a ton to say about a typical Senko worm. I mean, they if you're not sure what to throw, throw a Senko, they get the job done. There's so many different ways to rig them, wacky style, Texas rigged, just weightless, weedless. They're one of those first style baits out there. And any Senko I'm a big fan of. So definitely we'll be giving those a try. And I think uh, we not we got two left actually. So next we got the hard hat jigs excavator. I feel like we got a lot of hard hat jigs in these boxes, and I like that. I like the look of that. It's a shaky uh, shaky head hooks. We've got a three sixteenths out size, which actually is nice. I think if I ha if I have shaky heads, they're a little bit heavier than that. Uh, so this is a nicer finesse style, and I also like uh, the way the head is shaped. I think that'll be a big difference maker once it hits bottom. It'll give it a, an interesting look. I wonder, if anyone can answer this question, let me know, but I wonder, can you use like, what, I don't even know what they're called, like fluke baits on something like this? I bet that would look pretty cool, a fluke style bait on this. Last but not least, we've got cream lures split tail trailers. Oh, we got some, some, some thin, thin trailers. These things are thin, thin. Basically what you're working with, you can kind of see right here, you've got that just basic tube style bait and then you get about halfway in it, or about right there actually, you can kind of see where it splits and it'll split into two longer tails that go off for the rest of the bait. And I'm telling you, I bet if I ever decide to use a trailer for a spinner bait, that would look baller on that right there. That's probably a sweet combo. Uh, that'll definitely be something I have to try if I decide to go for a trailer as opposed to a trailer hook. Did I, did I get shafted? Bro, this is my least favorite box. And do you wanna know why? There is, there is no sticker in here. There is no sticker in here. I feel cheated. Uh, that's it for in this box. Uh, I really like some of the baits in here. Some of them I'm a little skeptical on. I'm skeptical on these trailers. I'm skeptical on this guy right here, the, the Savage Gear Minnow. But like I've said uh, in previous unboxing videos, it's not about just getting a bunch of baits you're familiar with and you know how to fish. It's about exploring different types of baits that you wouldn't necessarily pick out on your own. And that's what I really like about Mystery Tackle Box. I really hope you guys enjoyed. We'll have one more ice fishing video hopefully here in a couple weeks. Uh, but if not, I apologize. I'll go live at least once or twice and then it'll be the unboxing for April and we'll be hitting open water. But yeah, I guess that's it. So peace out.